In today's interior design video, I'm gonna share with you decorating ideas for spring 2022. Keep watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to Ramona Home. I'm so excited you're here today because in this video, I'm gonna share with you interior design ideas and decorating ideas for spring 2022. You guys, spring is just around the corner and interior design starts at the front door. So today I'm gonna show you how to create a gorgeous floral wreath. I'm gonna share with you a mental idea that includes some florals as well. I'm gonna show you some centerpieces and we're going to go and revisit the patio decorating and it's going to be so much fun. So if you are interested in interior design ideas, spring ideas for decorating and hacks, Please stay tuned, you're gonna have fun. Don't forget to like this video and share with your friends because that really helps this channel. So give this video a thumbs up. If you are already subscribed, don't forget to turn the notification bell on because you will not want to miss what's coming this whole year, 2022 is gonna be so much fun and full of interior design, decorating ideas and hacks that you will not want to miss. So be sure to consider subscribing. All right, you guys, well, let's start with idea number one for your interior design, which is going to be a gorgeous mental piece that I think you're really going to enjoy. Let's watch. All right, everyone. So the very first thing I wanna to talk to you about is creating a beautiful floral bouquet for your mantle or your entryway table. Now here I've created a gorgeous bouquet of viburnum, which is one of my favorite flowers. And as I mentioned to you before, this year I'm gonna use a lot of this lime green creams and whites for my decorating for spring and summer. So I just basically went ahead and started adding the viburnums to my bouquet right here and all there is is five of these stems crossed in the middle and then i went ahead and added some of the viburnums right here to the top it's super simple and then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add one of these uh, greeneries all the way in the crown of your bouquet to extend the shape all the way up as you guys can see it really helps it curve into the clock and it really makes a statement so now I'm gonna take you into my studio and I'm gonna show you how I create a gorgeous floral wreath for your front door step by step. Keep watching. Now, how easy is it to make an impact in your home if you have a mental, just do a larger than life floral bouquet, some candles on the other side, and voila, you have yourself a statement piece. That was so much fun to put together, but now I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna share with you step-by-step step how you can create a gorgeous spring wreath for your front door because you know interior design really does begin at the front door, so let's watch. Okay, everyone, so as I've told you before, when I am decorating any home for any interior design jobs that I'm doing, I like to start at the door. And I like to start at the door with a beautiful wreath, and today I'm gonna show you how to create a beautiful wreath with lemons, black and white, and a lot of succulents and greenery. So this is gonna be so much fun. The very first thing I wanna mention is a grapevine wreath that we're gonna be needing. I have my hot glue pan already melted. I'm gonna use a variety of these greeneries that came from Shunera Design Center. They have this cute little succulent and some greeneries that come already taped. I'm gonna use a variety of white flowers because I really feel like yellow and white go very well together and it's so beautiful for spring. A variety of other greeneries we're going to use. I'm gonna use my wire cutters because I cannot work without my wire cutters. My scissors, I'm gonna use a 16 gauge wire that is already pre-taped. I'm gonna use some of this beautiful black and white ribbon because it is so fresh and it kinda gives it that French feel, especially when you mix it with some of these lemons. All right, so I'm gonna get all of this situated. I'm gonna bring my first element and I'll be right back, so stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna make a bow for my wreath and I wanna give it a really long tail because you guys know that I like it when the tails just dangle over on the door. I think it's so pretty when the wind just pushes them over and it's just so elegant and pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these tails and I'm gonna insert this in a minute. So I'm gonna put that on the side. And when you're do doing longer tails, you wanna make sure that you do the tails first. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drop this ribbon on the floor and I'm gonna give it another short tail, probably about half of the wreath length or from here to the middle, about right here. And then I'm gonna do about four loop bow. I don't want it to be too overpowering. 
because I want all of the beautiful flowers and all of the uh, lemons to really show. But we do have to make a beautiful bow. So you guys know it's super easy how to make a bow, just pinch. And because this is not a printed on one side, all you have to do is bend like this and then gather in the middle and then do it one more time. And every time that you do it, you wanna make sure that you measure about the same as the last loop right here. So I'm gonna do a probably a six, yeah, about a six loop bow. So I'm gonna make sure that this one is a little bit bigger so that way they stagger together. I love making wreaths. I don't know about you guys, but I love making wreaths, whether it's for my mom or my grandma or just to sell or to just make and show you guys the techniques. I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here. So once you have it right here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring my two loops and I'm gonna insert that. I'm gonna gather right here. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my wire and I'm gonna go back and very tightly, we're gonna spin this one time, two times, and that's all you need. Open the wire. So now what you can do once it is spun like that, you can go ahead and fluff your bow, making sure that it's all fluff and pretty. What I like about this ribbon is because this is not wire, so it gives you that floppy feel versus a wire ribbon. I just love it when you're making something like this because it just makes it look more, more effortless, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and add my ribbon first or my bow first and the reason i want to do that is because that's going to save me from using greenery and other elements in that place where i'm going to put the ribbon so i'm going to make sure that i twist it about eight times then i'm going to cut the excess and i'm going to hang my form right here and remember because we're going to add so much things right here then what i'm going to do is i'm going to forget about my bow i'm actually kind of going to squish it like this we'll fluff it towards the end so that way we get to do the greeneries and so I don't get my tails dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and put them towards the back, like that. That way we can really work and then we'll fluff the bow at the end. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring a selection of greeneries that I had from past projects. Most of these greeneries did came from Walmart, but you can use any greeneries that you already may have. And I do uh, recommend that you use a variety of at least three types of ribbons. I'm sorry, of greeneries, which we have these limbs here. We have this beautiful foliage, and then also we have this eucalyptus that I think is going to look so pretty with the white flowers. But if you guys have been following the channel, you know that what I like to do is I like to start with one type of greenery every time. So I'm gonna start right here on the top, and then we're gonna give it about a half moon, because I wanna be sure that we have enough greenery so i'm gonna start right here remember what happens on the right happens on the left and these are the rules the ramona Rome, ramona home rules that i have made for you guys so you can have a beautifully balanced wreath and what goes up must come down so we're gonna measure about the same length a lot of you guys ask me what is this pan now this particular one i bought a goodwill i don't want to say about six years ago it only cost me three hundred uh, three dollars and seventy five cents and what you do is you put the pellet glues in it and that allows you to um, melt the glue and that way you're not using a hot glue gun. So in case that you are new to the channel, that's what that is. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and add it right here. So we're filling in and making sure that I use all of that same greenery. Remember, I like to use one greenery at a time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna carefully making sure that I don't get my bow dirty. I'm gonna go right here close to the bow, bend down and I'm gonna go right here close to it one more time. You guys, can you believe this is February already? I mean, January is gone, it's almost spring, it's all, spring is almost here and I'm super excited to bring you interior design ideas and decorating DIYs for your interior design this new year. I'm super excited. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that we specialize on Christmas. So we're already planning the looks for this year. This year we're going to go big, you guys. Go big or go home. I've been to market in Atlanta, Dallas, and in Vegas. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I was at the, at the markets shopping for looks and for items that we're going to be needing this year. We're gonna be helping Shinoda this year with all of their looks. So that's cool because I'm gonna be able to decide what looks are going to go into their displays and then bring you those looks, you guys. So it's going to be so much fun. 2022 is going to be 
the funnest year, God willing. We always have to put God first because we make make plans, but he might have another plan for our lives and that way we're not disappointed. So if God willing, we're going to have so much fun this year. All right, don't forget to go inside as well because you don't want a wreath that is just flat on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of these eucalyptus right here. I'm going to add it right about here, making sure the face is the inside of my wreath. I have a few more of these. I feel like I need one right here. So it starts giving some girth to this. Look at that, you see? Okay, so now I'm gonna use some of these eucalyptus and I'm gonna start, I'm sorry, this limbs here. This is from the Walmart store, as I like to call it, Wally World. Who else calls Walmart Wally World in here? All right, so I'm gonna do one on the top. Remember what happens on the right, happens on the left. So we're gonna go immediately right here and that is just the best way to balance your wreath or floral arrangement or anything that you're making. So now I'm gonna go right here, right about here, but now without first putting some glue so it really attaches to this wreath. Like that, and so now I'm gonna go to the left and add another one right here. Make sure you face them forward because that really gives it that fullness. So now I have one, two, three, four of these Monsteras so I want to go ahead and use them because I've had them for a while. So I also like to add like bigger foliages like this. I think it, it is so cute when you add it and it gives it so much texture. I'm going to start right here on the top and I'm going to add some of these Monstera and look at that. It gives it so much texture because now there's like smaller foliages, bigger foliages and I just love it. So I'm going to add one more right here and make sure that you go all the way into the form. And because they have that wire, you can really manipulate them on stera and make it look alive. All right, so now I'm going to go here. Thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this type of videos where I'm giving you multiple ideas for your interior design and your home decor. I'm having so much fun coming up with so many ideas for you guys. And sometimes you, all you need is just that one video to to inspire you and so that's what I'm trying to do with this. They are longer but you know what you don't have to watch it all at once you can just watch a little bit at a time. All right so that's that. Now I'm gonna put my foliages down I'm gonna bring my succulents and my florals and I'll be right back with you. Keep watching. Okay, so now I have my succulents right here. I'm gonna have my lemons at the ready, and then also all of my white flowers that I'm gonna be needing for this particular wreath. I also have three types of flowers. I have this beautiful, um, I don't know what it is. I got it at Walmart, but then I have this lilac, and then I have some mums, and also my lemons. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually fluff my bow because once we start adding flowers, we wanna make sure that we see some of these black and white in it and we don't cover all of it. So we wanna make sure that we fluff our bow really good. And look at that, isn't that pretty? I just love black and white. We've used it for fall last year. I haven't used it for Christmas, but I think I might do a black and white theme this year. So you make sure that you put all of these beautiful bows like this and then never forget to dovetail your your ribbons, because remember we have this thing that if I come to your home and it's not dovetail, I'm gonna ask you for a pair of scissors. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger. So I'm gonna cut right about where the wreath is. We have one, two, it's almost like a ladder motion that we're creating like that. And then this particular one, that is the longest one, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab this bow. I'm gonna make a knot right here to the side and then I'm gonna dovetail right here how cute is this so pretty all right so now that our bow is flapped now we can go to town with our flowers and i'm gonna start with this beautiful flower you can use any white flower that you may already have but i like this one from walmart because it already has some greenery which is going to help us to continue to cover the form and then when you cut right here you can also use this as a greenery all you have to do is cut that little bud and look at this if you have bold spots then you look for a place and then you add that greenery and it helps to cover and this particular one right here I'm gonna use remember what happens on the right happens on the left 
I'm gonna add it all the way over here. So now we're gonna move over to this side. I always like to give it a curvature so it kind of latches onto your wreath like this. Look at that. And then I'm gonna grab some of these beautiful mums and I'm going to go right here where the bow is. I'm gonna open that up. Make sure that it goes on the form so it really sticks on. I'm gonna grab another one of these mums from Walmart. I'm gonna open up right here like that. And then I wanna add something taller right here. So I'm gonna grab one of these flowers right here. Remember, uh, I like to use two to three types of different flowers and foliages to create more texture. So I'm gonna add that one right there so it continues to add. I feel like I need some right here. And for that, I'm gonna grab a mom with a double foliage. And then I'm going to add right here like this. I'm gonna grab one more. I do have one more. And I'm gonna go over to this side. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that I like me my flyaways. And for that particular flyaway, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab some of these lilac, but I'm gonna leave it at the end. So I'm also gonna use some of these beautiful succulent picks from Shinoda. I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna add some right here. So dig into your glue. You guys, this is turning out so pretty and so fresh looking. It's perfect for the spring season. So I'm gonna add this right here and look at that succulent right there. Isn't that pretty? It just gives it texture, it gives it character. I'm gonna add another one. So I'm gonna cut right here and I'm gonna add a prayer on this side. Let me see, make sure that you have some of that glue and go into the wreath form like this. And then I'm gonna add one right here because we're when you don't have that many items, you make sure that you at least have three to create the triangle we are always talking about. So I'm gonna put my bow to the side. I'm gonna bend this a little bit on my glue. I'm gonna go ahead and insert right here, making sure that it goes in. And look at that, that creates so much texture. It gives you that succulent. We'll fluff our bow one more time when we're done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add some of these flyaways, which is this lilac. And when you're doing flyaways, make sure that you have a longer stem because I will really allow you to let it stick out like this. Look at that. Make sure that it goes in, it is in. I'm gonna put one right here on the top. So I'm gonna select a longer one and I'm gonna go over here to the top. Make sure it goes on the form. And look at that, that's creating a lot of that fussiness of, of flyaway that I love. I will not make a wreath. The first thing I look for when I'm planning a wreath is what am I gonna use for the flyaway? Because that's what really gives it that character. And I feel like I'm gonna add some right here on the bottom. We are almost finished. As you guys can see, it doesn't take but a few minutes to create a beautiful wreath for your front door. I'm gonna add it right there. And then I'm gonna add one right here. So make sure you put enough glue to that stem and then you go into the form like this. Look at that, how pretty is that? All right, so now that we are done with our flowers, oh, I have one more lilac. Let's see, where can I put it? I'm gonna put it right here. Look at that. So now that we have our flowers, I'll fluff the, the ribbon in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab some of these lemons from the dollar store, and then I'm gonna open up right here and I'm going to insert some of these lemons. When you're doing lemons, make sure that you cluster them together in sets of threes, twos, and ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add two right there, then I'm gonna move down and I'm gonna add one right here. But you have to dip into that glue what I like about that glue is because it really hangs on to the lemon. Look, I don't even have to hang on to it. It'll just dry and it is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna add one more. Let's see. I'm gonna add a set over here. And just because you don't see it right here, like you can see a little peek of it, make sure that you um, add enough glue because you don't want it to come crashing down. All right, so I'm gonna add right here. See how there's a set of two, and then I'm gonna come over to this side. Don't forget to go on the outside as well. You wanna make sure that you have a good balance on that wreath. I'm gonna add this one right here, like that. Let's see, oh, that is so pretty. 
this one I'm a little concerned, so I'm gonna, there you go. So now I'm gonna add one up here on the top as well, making sure that I have enough glue. And, oh, that one fell down because I didn't secure it, but I'm gonna re-glue it. I'm gonna put it back where I wanted it, right there. Now it'll stay, because it really hang on to some of that um, um, foliage right here. All right, so far this is so cute. But I feel like, you know, right here where we tied our bow, I wanna do something special. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab some of this succulent. Let me find one that is pretty. Yeah, I'll use this right here. So I'm gonna use this piece of succulent right here. I'm gonna cut them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add that over here to where I tied my bow. I'm gonna add some foliage which should all be this succulent foliage. And then I'm gonna grab a flower, but I'm gonna cut it really short. So I want it to be really close to it. Right here, over here, look, so it looks like it's coming out of the same area, like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of my lemons and I'm gonna add it also facing down right here. And look at that. I don't know if you guys can see right now, but I will show you in the door and it just looks like it fell off from it. Okay, so we're almost done. We've added the whole top of it. We added a little cluster right here. But as you guys can see, it looks like your bow is just right here. So it looks really tight in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a trick on how you can create more depth to your wreath with the ribbon. So what you're going to do is you're gonna find one of these stems that you um, had from cutting either a flower or you need is like a little stick. So what I'm gonna do is cut the little stick short. Then I'm gonna bring out a little wire from my wire drawer and I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna do two just to show you. So this piece of ribbon that we had, it was left over. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna pinch right here, make a bow, a loop, and then I'm gonna grab one of my sticks that I selected. I'm gonna grab some of this wire and then I'm going to really, really tight. You have to do this really, really tight in order for it to really hang on like this. And so now you're gonna have this bow right here. So what you need to do is you need to grab some glue or dip it into your glue. And then we're gonna go right here and we're gonna continue to add loops to our bow and see how that just extended the bow over that way. So now I'm gonna cut from my ribbon since I already have, I'm almost done with this ribbon, might as well use some of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half right here. I'm gonna cut and this is something that is super quick. It doesn't take but a minute. So all you do is like pinch, make sure you pinch right here, put your stick in very, very tightly. Very, you have to do this very tightly so it doesn't come out and then also the glue will help it. And now you have this cute little bow like this. So what you do is you dip it into your glue and then you go right here. I'm going to the form and look at that. That just helped me extend the bow shape over here. I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna put it in the door and show you what it looks like. Keep watching. Okay, so before I show you the end result of this wreath on the front door, I wanna invite you to come and join me on my Instagram for daily Insta stories, behind the scenes, and all of the things you guys don't get to see here on my YouTube channel. The links to all of my social medias are going to be linked in the description box below. Let's see what this wreath looks like on the door. You guys, I just wanna show you real quick what this wreath turned out to be like. It was super easy, super, super affordable to make with Walmart items and Believe it or not, dollar store lemons. Aren't those cute? I just love the little knot right here with the mom and the lemon and the succulent. And I love all the succulents in it. I think it turned out so cute. It is fresh looking, it is spring-like, and the black and white really adds that French feel to it. I love it, but I cannot wait to read your comments. So leave me a comment and let me know what do you think.
I'm having so much fun sharing with you guys all of these design and decorating ideas for spring 2022. I really hope you're enjoying them and I cannot wait to read your comments at the end of the video. But right now I'm going to take you into my dining room and I'm going to share with you centerpiece ideas and place settings for your spring decorating. Let's watch. Okay, so I want to mention real quick, I chose this beautiful white and green tablecloth that I had from quite a few years ago. And you guys know that I like to use a white set of dishes. I think it is a must have to have white dishes at your house because you can set basically any tablescape. To give it a little bit of texture, I'm gonna add a napkin and this one, it's a floral napkin and that's just to kind of color block both of my salad and my dinner plate. So I'm gonna put that down like this and I'm gonna set the other white plate for the salad on top of that. And I have selected this really beautiful Ralph Lauren napkin and I have a sheer lime green under it and it has a paisley color, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, you know they said the devil is on the details. So I have this really cute knife rest that I bought at a store named Nell Hills quite a few years ago. And so to set your forks and your knives, remember that fork has four letters just like the word left and spoon and knife have five letters just like the word right. So if you remember this, you'll always have a beautifully set table. Then I have brought these goblets that I purchased from Ikea. And as you guys can see, just having a collection of items from high to low, it really can create a beautiful tablescape. Now I'm gonna show you a few options for centerpiece. All right, everyone, so for the centerpiece, I have something very simple, which is this wooden box. There's nothing but a block of foam right here, and then I cover it with this beautiful green moss. And what I like about this is because it's low, um, you could also do a floral arrangement on it, but because we're doing a spring summer theme that I want it to be very simple and elegant. And as you can see, all of the greens from the tablecloth to the napkins and the greenery on the centerpiece really make a statement, and I love it. However, when I have guests over, I do like to will create a little bit of drama. So I have this beautiful potted plant that I'm gonna put right here in the middle. Now this could be for impact and it looks absolutely gorgeous. It just creates a lot of drama hive and it really creates a summer spring feel that I absolutely love. Now the other thing that I wanna to talk to you about is family heirlooms. Uh, Jamison's family give us this set of soul shakers and uh, these little trays so I like to bring them out as well as this beautiful crystal bottle holder that really just creates a lot of elegance on your table. It doesn't matter what the theme is. So we just like to set that out to put our wine. It's kind of like a wine coaster. And as you can see, it is absolutely gorgeous. And I do want to talk about how some things are from Ralph Lauren, some things are thrifted, some things are heirlooms. And that's what really creates a beautiful table setting. Now, if you think this is too high, of course, I would not leave it for um, dinner but as you guys can see you can just put this plant over here to the corner on your server and bring your low centerpiece so you always have options what do you think Green is one of my favorite colors to use for spring and summer, but now I'm gonna share with you a spring Easter centerpiece and tablescape idea. All right, everyone, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue my blocks of foam. So you guys have seen me do this before in past centerpieces, so I like to be very generous with the glue and go ahead and put this down as close as you can to the edge in the center of your tray. We're gonna do the same one. Now, if you've been watching this channel, you know that I like to keep the foam inside of the little package because that way when you poke on it, it when it comes crumbling down, when it's inevitable that it's gonna crumble coming down, uh, you can keep it all in the package together, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my candle in the middle and I'm gonna put my hurricane right here and then I'm gonna press down really firmly to mark a circle on my foam so that way I know that the candle and the hurricane are going to be there and I'm not going to cover it with all of the greenery. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side. Then I'm going to bring my moss and I'm going to use a little bit of this green moss to cover these mechanics. 
um, we're gonna put some greener in it. So you don't wanna be as generous as we were with the lantern, but you still want some of this in case that you were to pick through it, then it'll all be all concealed. I think that, that will be plenty. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and cover this like this. And it's fine if it spills forward like this because it looks more organic. It looks more intentional. All right. So then what I want to do is I'm going to start with my foliage and I'm going to start right here. And what I like about this foliage is because when you insert through the moss, it'll help it contain it. Remember what happens on the right happens on the left. And I'm going to start on the corners right here. So I'm going to do right, left. Then I'm going to start doing the corners like this because that's what's going to give us the width. Now I do recommend if you don't have a Lazy Susan and if you are a crafter, if you are a centerpiece maker like I am, I love making centerpieces for every season, I recommend to get one. And remember what goes up must come down. I'm gonna go ahead and put another one right here. And when you are inserting your foliages, I really recommend to give them a twist. And I'll show you what I mean. Instead of putting it flat like this, just give it a little bit of a spin like this because it gives it a little bit more character. So I have one on my left, one on my right. I'm gonna repeat over here, giving it a little twist like this. That's gonna give it a little bit of height. I'm gonna go like this. That's all we're gonna use for this. Now I'm gonna make sure that my hurricane still sits flat. Perfect. That's all the palm I'm gonna use. And this palm came from Hobby Lobby and this eucalyptus that I'm going to add came from Walmart. If you guys know me, you know that I like to add all kinds of varieties of greeneries because the more greenery you add to your centerpiece or your floor arrangement, the more natural it will look. Because when we do fresh floors, that's what we do. We just try to uh, mix as many greeneries because it looks more botanically correct. So that's what we're gonna do with all of these faux ones. All right, so I have one on my left, one on my right. I'm gonna go ahead and add this one right here in the top just for a little bit more of height. And I think I'm gonna put it right here. Perfect. All right, so this is the greenery. And as you guys can see, it's very well balanced. It's all about the balance of the greenery. So what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna bring my flowers and I'll get started. All right, everyone, before I get going with the flowers, I wanna show you what we're gonna be doing with these little stems. Now, this is the stem of a dollar store bouquet of flowers. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do a little pick like this. So basically we just separate the stems and we are going to go ahead and smear some hot glue on them like this and just be generous here. Swirl it around if you must like this. Let it, let it just go all over the place. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna insert one of these Easter eggs. And so we basically just made a pick to insert our floral bouquet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. I'm gonna put that one down. It's super simple. You have to do is separate the stems from this, you give them a little bend to create a hook. It almost looks like one of those things that you scratch your head with. Like this, and then you add some glue to it, very generously, and swirl it around like this, and insert your egg, and that will give you an egg pick. So I'm gonna use six. You know I like to work with sets of threes, twos, and ones. All right, so now that our egg picks are done, I'm gonna start with our florals and I'm gonna start with these peach peonies. They came from Walmart and I'm gonna put one right here. And then remember what happens on the left must happen on the right. So just go ahead and pinch them like this, swirl it around and I'm gonna repeat one more right here. Now also, you know that I like to work with sets of threes, twos and ones. So I'm gonna do three of them over on this side like that. Then I'm gonna do a set of two with him right here. And I'm just gonna leave one on this side, but I'm gonna add one more over here down on the bottom. So that way that flower is all throughout the centerpiece, as you guys can see, but there's sets of twos, threes, and ones, and that gives a balance to your floral design. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to some of these cream roses that I have, and I'm gonna get them all out. If you guys have been following this channel, you know that I like to work with all the same flower at the same time. So I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna do one up. What goes up must come down. And that's our set of two. I'm gonna swirl around over to this side. 
and I'm gonna do a set of three. So I'm gonna do one up here, give it a little bend. I'm gonna go do one right here like this, and then I'm gonna add a third one right here. So that gives us a set of three, two, then I'm gonna add one over here by itself. And make sure that you insert all the way down. And I love the sound of, of foam. All right, so I'm gonna put one up here on the top and I have a few more peonies that I'm just gonna go ahead and add to my centerpiece or my wire cutters. Thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this series. I cannot wait for you guys to see the rest of the spring Easter series. I'm coming up with some ideas to help you design something for your home and make beautiful things. All right, so then I'm gonna add some of these pink flowers. I'm gonna add one right here. And I'm gonna, what goes down must come up. Always remember that. Those are rules that I came up with. So I, when I was learning how to do flowers, you know, you just have to come up with your own rules. So that way you remember when you're doing florals. All right, I'm gonna insert one right here. At this point, these are just little filler flowers. And that one right here. And I'm gonna do a set of two with him right here. How cute is that? I'm gonna bring him up, bring the color up. I'm gonna go ahead and do it opposite like that and I have one more but I think I'm gonna save it till the end I don't want him right now right then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of this beautiful white lilac that also came from Walmart and this is gonna be kind of like our flyaway so they really have to stick out further out as you can see so I'm gonna do what goes here actually I'm gonna put this one up because it's longer sometimes you need the longer ones up on the top so they fly further and I'm gonna go ahead and do one here in the bottom. So what goes up must come down like that. Then you're gonna twist it a little bit. Then you're gonna repeat one up, one down. And you wanna do this all throughout your centerpiece. So that way it's all cohesive all the way around. One up, one down. You're gonna continue to twist. One up like this and one down. This lilac, it's so pretty and it comes in white and also in a lavender lilac, obviously, color. And I just love the white because it gives your floral arrangements like this daintiness to it. And as you guys can see, that was super easy. Just go all the way around adding this lilac. I'm gonna grab this rose and I can see a hole right here. So I'm gonna cut it a little shorter. And that's why you always wanna save some of your flowers towards the end, because you might be able to see a spot where you need I'm gonna add a lilac right here in the middle as well. Let me see, step away from it. That is really good. All right, so the next step is going to be to add our Easter egg picks. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add, remember to work in sets of twos, threes and ones. So I'm gonna do two right here. This is gonna poke out. I'm gonna go ahead and do a set of three here. One, two, and you wanna put them close together because when you put them close together, you create a cluster, as you can see right here, and it's more visible. So I'm gonna add this last one right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring my candle. Where is my candle? We're gonna put it right here in the center. I'm gonna put this hurricane on top of it, like this, and I'm gonna turn my candle. And that's how easy it is to create an Easter spring centerpiece. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my table, show you how I set the table. So stay tuned. All right, everyone. So for this table setting, I wanted to show you that I got these placemats at Walmart and I'm gonna put them on the horizontal. Then on top of that, I'm going to add this wicker um, charger because I really love the texture of wicker for this particular holiday, which is Easter and also for spring. Then I have a collection of plates. They are white with a gold rim that I use for special occasions. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this white plate. Now I did get at Walmart also this set of napkins and these are kitchen towels actually, but I'm gonna use it as a napkin on my placemat. And I just love the color, it's that Tiffany blue and it has an accent of another like Robin's eggs blue and I just absolutely love it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add these dishes that actually were the china when I was a child. My mother split it in sets of fours and gave every of her child a set of four. So I like to use it because it really, it's something special. Plus it has that pink and blue 
that we're going for. Then on top of that, I'm gonna add this cute little plate that is the set of the gold rim plate. And I just thought to add something cute to the placemat, I'm gonna add this tiny little ball with a little bit of grass and an Easter egg and a complementary color, which is the pink that we're using just for a little touch of Easter. Now for my stemware, I'm gonna go ahead and use a pink water goblet and I'm gonna use a blue, really pretty blue um, wine glass, maybe a mimosa glass. And for my flatware, I'm going to go ahead and use this beautiful gold that I've collected through the years. And remember that fork has four letters like the word left. So we're gonna put our fork on the left and spoon and knife have five letters like the word right. And always remember to put your knife facing towards the setting that way it's not on people's way. All right, so that's what our table looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the centerpiece and show you the end result. Okay, so far we've done a wreath for our front door, a beautiful mantel piece that was super easy. I've shared with you a few tablescape ideas and place settings, so now I'm gonna take you outside and share with you some of my patio. Before we do that, I'm gonna share how to create a fabulous arrangement that is going to be used outside for your patio decorating. Then after that, I'm gonna share how to set a beautiful table and all of the finishing touches that you need to do for your patio. I really hope you enjoy, let's watch. All right, everyone, so to make this large arrangement of forsythia, what we're going to need is going to be six of these forsythia branches. They come on this really thick uh, branch, but we're gonna be cutting them down. I'm gonna use a variety of greenery so we can cover our mechanics. I've chosen some medium ones, some really small ones, and I have some longer ones to really give it a little bit more volume. Then what I'm going to also need is this foam right here now i want to explain i found this at my dollar store and this foam it's double layered because when you're going to use very thick and heavy materials you really have to have a lot of grip so what i do is i put the first layer and then i add another block of foam right on the top and this is taped with florist tape so that's going to be our base and i have put a little bit of rock in it as you guys can see so it really has some weight to it we're also going to need some of these fake branches that I have, but if you have any fallen branches on your yard, those will do. Forsythia is a bush and it really is very branchy and very wild. So that's what we're gonna go for. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and cover my vase or my container. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start right here on the top and I'm just gonna go ahead and insert some of these greeneries and you want to go ahead and use the smaller ones on the top and the larger ones on the bottom so you can cover some of this perimeter. And I am so excited, you guys, to see the patio makeover finished because it is going to be really, really fun. And if you are doing your patio makeover, be sure to leave me a comment down below because I wanna know what is it that you're doing to make your patio more livable. You know, right now in these quarantine times, we spend a lot of time outside reading, having a glass of wine, or a cup of coffee in the morning, and sometimes even breakfast. So why not just make it look livable and an extension of your home? All right, so basically what I'm doing is just greening and I'm gonna go ahead and move to the medium ones now. And I'm gonna go ahead and poke into my foam. Now what that's doing is gonna cover the base of our urn. And if you guys don't remember the arrangement, I'm gonna throw a little clip right now. It is the arrangement that we used on our last video uh, for the centerpiece and those centerpieces are also going to be outside for this makeover so i'm super excited it's going to be very very fun so keep watching all right so so far i'm just greening and i wanted to do the greening process because a lot of the times i just show you uh, a few steps but for this particular video i want to show you that just a few greeneries can really go a long way and then also if you've been following ramon at home you know that i like to leave my foam on the plastic, that way it doesn't make a mess because this dry foam, it really tends to make this fuzzies and it gets everywhere and it really hurts when you breathe it in. So it's really, really important that you just keep that foam in. And if you've been following the channel, you know that I worked as a florist for over 10 years 
and my favorite thing to do was massive bouquets like this because they really make an impact and well they really have a wow factor and i'm so excited to show you guys this one in the patio all right so i have a few of these long ones this is the best opportunity you have to get rid of any leftover greenery and as you guys can see i'm just going to insert it like this to each side let's see whatever you have whatever greenery you have you can use i'm using leftovers of this right here also um, i'm gonna throw a playlist of all of the florals that i have done here on the channel so if you want to catch up on some floral design i really recommend you go ahead and check them out and as you guys can see i do some up some down and then i'm gonna use this too but i'm gonna leave them till the end so i'm gonna put those to the side hang on i have this one right here all right as you guys can see it's just a variety of greeneries so far and so what i'm going to do next i'm going to insert my tallest branch this is my tallest branch and i'm going to put it dead in the center if you guys have been following the channel you know that when we make any type of floral arrangement it doesn't matter how small or how big it is you have to have a core the core is that main branch where everything radiates from if you get this trick then you will have beautiful floral arrangements all throughout. It doesn't matter the size. So basically, I just look for the middle right here and I'm gonna go ahead and push it all the way, all the way down. And like I said, because it's going to be a way arrangement, um, it has to have a lot of foam to hold it, okay? So then I have some clippings right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert some of these clippings and just make sure they go all the way down because remember, they're pretty heavy. Especially if you're doing this with with natural branches, you wanna make sure that you really, really poke all the way in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert this one in an angle. Make sure that it goes all the way down like that, so it really stays in. So far, so good. So then I'm gonna put this guy over here to the side because I want to show you a trick. So I have this right here. What we're going to do is we're gonna cut them out. If you seen me do floral arrangements before you know that I like to cut all my florals at once so I'm gonna cut those three then I'm gonna cut these three right here too thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this video and thumbs up if you are excited for the end result I am so excited to show you all right so then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring out my skewers I'm gonna only bring out three because I'm gonna elongate three and then I'm gonna bring out my tape okay so basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab this branch right here. We're going to go ahead and put this skewer right here. We're going to give it a longer stem because we want our bouquet to be long and dramatic. I love drama when it comes down to floral design. I really do feel that one bouquet, just one bouquet, a dramatic bouquet can really make a statement. And this year for fall and for Christmas, you guys, I mean, I'm getting a little bit ahead of whatever is going to happen. If the Lord allows us to get there, we are going to have a fabulous, fabulous holiday season here where I'm at home. And I really hope that you're here for it because we cannot miss it. That's all I'm going to say. All right. So leave me a comment down below and let me know if you've done any of the floral arrangements here where I'm at home. I want to know what bouquets you've done. And if you can send us a picture to our Instagram, I'll be more than glad to share with everybody. It's really, really fun to read people's comments on your work. All right, so basically what I do is I just attach that skewer, and these are your basically your, uh, your kebab skewers. You can find that any grocery store. And then I just cover, as you guys can see, the stem, and it looks like a longer stem. Now, what is very important also is that you fluff this particular flower, when it grows, I uh, didn't grow up in Kansas, but I lived in Kansas for a long time and it was my favorite to go cut when I worked at the flower shop because it really makes drama and it's just so beautiful because it's all jagged and all twisted. And so that's what you want to do with this particular branch. You don't want to insert it like this. Look at the difference between something you just twisted a little bit, flaps out, and look at the difference of something that if you just insert it like this, you're not giving it any life so we want to give him some life yes all right so so far so good i have them all twisted like this and i have three of the longer ones 
I have three of the short ones, and then I had already cut some other ones over here. So these are my short ones. And then I have my long ones over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put them right here to the side. I'm gonna bring my bouquet back in. All right, so I'm gonna do it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with some of the longer ones. And as you guys can see, by adding that skewer, it really is giving it a lot more height to my bouquet. And now remember the center one is your core and you always want to insert in an angle and make it radiate from that core. Think of a tree. Think of any tree in your backyard. If I was to insert it straight up, it would not give it any girth to the arrangement. And you just make them look like they grew from that core. And then you graduate a little bit down and then insert a little further down into the foam like so, and just let them hang out like that. And then I'm gonna do one over to this side. And then I'm gonna start with the short one. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna start at the bottom now, and you wanna do five points. So I'm gonna do a star. I'm gonna do one right there. I'm gonna do one right here. I'm gonna spin it around a little bit. How fun is this? Thumbs up. If you guys like a large bouquet, and if you wanna see more floral bouquets like this, leave me the hashtag floral so I know you guys are interested. So that's three. I'm gonna do one more right here, four. And then I'm gonna do one more right here. And so now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna move my step ladder from the bottom a little step up, so in between the short one and the tall one, I'm gonna insert one. And keep in mind to insert in an angle so that way it looks like it's growing from your core. This is gonna be so pretty outside. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait, you guys, to show you the whole look. All right, like that. And always, always, always spin your bouquet around. Always, always. That is the only way you're going to create balance on your bouquets. If that's the only one thing that you learn from watching these videos, then let it be that thing that you must have to spin around any floral bouquet that you're making. All right? So I'm gonna add this one right here on the top. And I have two tall ones still, so I'm gonna go ahead and I feel like I need one right here. Go ahead and insert all the way down. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and break down a little bit because I want it to be not so long so I can insert it right here. Perfect. All right, so far so good. Then of course I had two of these greeneries and I'm gonna go ahead and insert them up here on the top, meeting each other. So basically what I mean is they're going to go like this, okay? So I'm gonna insert one like this, one like this, and they're going to meet in the middle like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one right here, and that is just to bring some greenery up on the top. And then I have saved some of this right here. And you wanna always save some of your greenery towards the end, so that way you can go back and look for places like this right here that you might need foam covered-ish, and you go ahead and insert right there. Okay, and now keep in mind, this is also going to be sitting on top of that urn. So you really don't have to cover all of the bottom because it's gonna be sitting on top of something but you do not wanna see foam like right here. I'll show you right here. Obviously it needs some coverage, so I like to insert some of this greenery. Now let me explain something real quick too before we get done. This darker greenery, it really helps to highlight the brightness of the bouquet. So I always like to use some really bright green and some darker greeneries to kinda highlight the greenery, the green. It really just helps it to stand out as you guys can see. All right, I need one right here. I'm gonna keep spinning around until I'm done covering all of those spots, like that. And just like that, we have a massive, massive, massive forsythia bouquet for our patio. And I cannot wait to show you guys the end result. Keep watching.
All right, everyone, so now that we've gotten to this point, we're gonna bring some wine glasses, and James is gonna show you that these longer ones really do create and play with the height of the setting, and I love the way this is looking with the forsythia bouquet right behind. So far, so pretty. All right, you guys, well, that's all I have for today. And let me just tell you, I had so much fun sharing all of these design ideas and DIYs for spring 2022. If you have not seen last week's video, which had another 10 DIY ideas for spring 2022, I'm gonna link it right here. And it's also gonna be in the description box below. But be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what was your favorite part. And if you wanna see more videos like this with multiple projects in them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Consider subscribing. You can watch more videos right now. Until next time, bye.